So we're going to talk about Haiti. Not enough people are talking about Haiti. I've said it before, I have a personal connection to Haiti. I have an interest in Haiti. I know lots of Haitian people. They have good values. They're hard workers that believe in God. They have good values. They're polite. They're definitely not American, and that's why I like them. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about this misadventure uh, in Haiti coming down the pike here. A uh, little story came out today. Was it today in the Miami Herald? Today? No, it came out yesterday by Jacqueline Charles, who is the Miami Herald's basically Haiti person. She's basically a, ta a, a, a stenographer or a parrot for the State Department. So she obviously has very close connections to people in the State Department. She's gotten a lot of breaking information from people, so she basically says what they want her to say. But there's some interesting points in this article. So here we go. Foreign, foreign governments are being urged to make good on pledges to fund Kenya-led security forces in Haiti, where criminal armed groups continue to spread misery and despair while controlling more than 80% of the capital. Keep that in mind. 80% of the cap, more than 80% of the capital. We call on international partners to do more and give more. So basically they're saying right here, you guys haven't given the money you have promised. They promised international groups, I'm, I'm supposing nations and probably NGOs and other groups, pledged $118 million but so far have only deposited $21 million in the United Nations Trust Fund. And this was a problem even months ago, when, coming up to this point where they were talking about this, no one wanting to actually give the money they pledged. United States has provided more than $309 million. That's a drop in the bucket for us, really. I don't see why not just go ahead and fork over the other $118 million. I mean, we can just print the money, right? What does it matter? We can just print the money. It doesn't matter. So, Thomas Greenfield addressed the Security Council and called on international community to accelerate efforts, blah, blah, blah. And then she goes in this gobbly gook. Oh, they can't, the Haitians can't go to school. Actually, she, don't, she doesn't sound like that because look at her. She looks like, um, you know, I... I have to say it. She looks like James Brown. So she's like, Ha! Let's come to terms with one thing. Haitians, ha! Like all of us. Is that a good James Brown? I feel good. Unless I'm getting killed, kidnapped, and raped. You have to put, you have to insert rape into every sort of international appeal regarding a conflict because women's hearts melt when you say rape and you got them you emotionally you got you got women you can just say rape like they did in israel and then you got the women you got their attention they can no longer think rationally because their emotions take over this is why you have so much rape propaganda mass rape that Hamas, ha that hasn't been proven yet, the whole mass rape story, because women are so susceptible to this. And women are an important demographic now, because women have power now. So they go after the women, they know how to emotionally grab women, and then suck them in, and then they're mush in their hands. The first conjugate of 200 Kenyan police officers arrived in Haiti last week and have been slowly taking to the streets on patrols. Now, this is interesting because... Let me see if I can find this story. Yeah, I thought that I saw a story some time ago where they said 400 officers would be going in the first wave. But I don't see it that in any of the stories I saved. So... So far, 200. Maybe they were saying 400, maybe not, and maybe, you know, they left it up in the open. Somewhere I thought I saw that. But anyway, uh, the gangs, so armed gangs did not make good on the threat So to stop the, the deployment. So Jimmy Cherizier, who is not 
the leader of a gang. He's the leader of a vigilante organization, in my opinion, and a sort of revolutionary organization. But they always group him in with the gangs. So Jimmy Cherizier said they would stop the deployment. They would fight. They haven't done that yet. They have tried to test the forces, temporarily taking over the, a police station before police regain control and then setting fire to another one, both located south of the capital. So, blah, blah, blah. Now, here's an interesting factoid. They said, however, with 3,252 murders recorded since January, including 20 police officers killed by armed gangs, Haiti remains in a vicious cycle of killing by armed gangs and, I'm going to get to this, so-called vigilante self-defense groups. Well, let me go get with this first. Now, this is an interesting inclusion in the article. This is the first time I've seen, I can remember seeing, a mainstream journalist acknowledging that there are vigilante self-defense groups, which is what G9 is, actually. Uh, so that's what is interesting. So Jacqueline Charles here, hats off to you. You're not a total hack. At least maybe you're trying to appear like not a total hack. Uh, maybe she, you know, I don't know. This is just an interesting inclusion. Not expecting this from a mainstream journalist who is obviously well connected within the U.S. government. So that's interesting. 3,252 murders. Now I just did a, a, um. Let me see if I can find it again. Okay, so in the United States, there are 21,156 reported homicide cases in 2022. So let's just say that's kind of an average. Anyway, 3,000 in six months in Haiti. Is that really all that bad? I'm not sure. I remain deeply disturbed, gobbledygook. Threats and attacks against human rights defenders or NGO spooks. In other words, journalists. Who likes journalists? I don't know. Can it, can they blame? Can journalists blame people for wanting to murder them? I'm not saying I want to murder anyone, but can can pe can journalists really blame? They're all a bunch of sellouts. I mean, go figure. People want to murder you. Okay. So, Salvador said gangs' recurrent attacks have severely hampered national and international efforts to fast-track the recruit recruitment process of new p police officers. Yeah, no one wants to be a Haitian police officer right now. Go figure. This is already turning out to be a disaster, this whole thing. It was hastily put together. I mean, it had been in the works for a little while, but it was just a half... This has been an, a half-ass... Uh, uh, attempt at nation building perhaps the most half-ass nation building exercise the united states has ever been the ringleader of <clears throat> so here we have brian nichols and secretary of state international narcotics and law enforcement todd robinson both touted i mean these guys have to be you know cia assets uh they're they're oh everything's going good that's their job to say things are going good that's what they do lie about things going good uh neither nichols nor robinson would say when the next conjugate of kenyan officers would arrive so this is the thing kenya has just been rocked by some of the most severe protests in recent memory ruto has actually at first he was very aggressive and immediately after that he started to be very conciliatory making huge concessions to the activists and i just heard today for for example i just heard today that he was on a call on x which is pretty cool if you ask me he tries to be a hip guy he was on a call on x one of there was an activist who confronted him the activist said hey, what's going on with all these disappearances? And by the way, I was kidnapped from my house. This was an activist who took part in the protests. I was kidnapped from my house, blindfolded, and taken somewhere and questioned by uh, unmarked police officers, ununiformed, 
in civilian clothes. And Ruto actually apologized to him on X in front of the world. So I don't know what's going on with Ruto. He must feel very, very threatened right now in his position. And that doesn't bode well for further deployment of this police force to Haiti. As a matter of fact, I expect it to kind of be a total flop. We'll see how far this goes. But then it gets even better. The mandate of the mission is to work with the Haitian police at all times. But at all times, the Haitian forces are going to be in the lead on all of these operations. Well, that that's not going to work. Um, obviously, Ruto doesn't want any casualties. Um, nobody wants casualties in Haiti. So they're just going to sit back and, what, tell the Haitian police officers who haven't been in control? What are they going to do? They're going to train Haitian police officers that have been in a basically civil war type of environment for over a year and they're going to sit what are they going how are they going to help these police officers so the kenyan police have a um i would say a reputation for brutality they just killed 30 people last week in a protest so i'm wondering if that's why the the kenyans were tapped among other reasons. And I, I would add, by the way, that this whole deployment of Kenyan forces, even though the protests in Kenya last week were, were triggered by this tax hike that the IMF, basically, the International Monetary Fund, is demanding that Kenya do something about their fiscal situation. Let's not forget who runs the IMF. That's the United States, the United States financial system. Uh, they demanded some sort of austerity measures, and that's where the tax hikes came from. So even though the protests were caused by that, and deservedly so, uh, because they were severe tax hikes, and Kenyans are already suffering very badly from uh, you know, inflation, and uh, even then, I would submit right here and right now that the undercurrent of the discontent has a lot to do with Ruto, who came out the gates when he was elected, uh, trying to act like a Kenya first, anti-West, not necessarily anti-Western, but he could, in the beginning, he did a lot of grandstanding calling out European hypocrisy. And then just within the last several months, he's been basically, first Austin goes to Kenya and they sign a security deal, basically bribing Ruto to send Kenyan troops, okay, to Haiti. And then just a couple weeks ago, Ruto becomes the first and the first in decades African head of state to visit, I believe, the White House first in decades now given the general anti-colonialist movement going on in africa i think this had a lot to do with the youth movement no one in africa trusts the united states no one in africa wants their heads of state or most most people in africa do not want to see their heads of state uh carrying water for the united states or any european country so even though those riots protests were caused by the tax hikes i would submit here and now that the undercurrents are ruto basically selling out to the united states because he looks like a total liar because in the beginning he basically gave the impression that he wasn't going to do anything like that but the imf is putting pressure on him just today in this article the IMF is here. Say the, This article talks about how he's doing spending cuts because the IMF wants him to do spending cuts is what it comes down to. It says that in the article. So where am I at with this article? Sorry for the sidetrack, but I think that's important context. Why? Because I don't think Kenya's really going to have its heart in this mission at all. 
So that's the end of the article. Now, I wanted to go over a couple things here. First, let's get James Brown out of here. Okay, let's just do a little thought exercise here. Um, Port Al Prince has a population of 987,000 people. Just Google this. How many troops would it, would you need to occupy a city with a military force? Now, that's what's happening here, whether they want to admit it or not. They can call these people police all they want. They're basically troops, and they're going to occupy Haiti and bring it under control. In order to occupy a place, you need to have troops everywhere, and you need to really, you need to really clamp down. You don't just go around and arrest a few people. If you have a situation like what's going on in Haiti, you need to occupy it. <clears throat> it takes <clears throat> fifty to five to fifty troops per one thousand inhabitants. Historically, the historical data suggests. So let's just take this at face value for a moment. If we take nine hundred and eighty-seven thousand three hundred and ten, well, I just I rounded it up to a million. And you put that, you divide that, and I chose 25. So about half, a little less than halfway between 5 and 50 troops. 25. You need 40,000 troops to just occupy Port-au-Prince. Just Port-au-Prince. That's not even mentioning all of Haiti. That's what it really takes. They can't recruit Haitian police. The security forces from other countries aren't going to be in the lead, apparently. And you only have 1,000 of them. The international community doesn't want to pay, is, is dragging their feet on paying the $118 million. They don't even want to pay $118 million. So, I would have to say, this is already a failure, folks. It was destined to fail. <clears throat> you need probably, for Haiti alone, just the entire country of Haiti, a couple hundred thousand troops to occupy and to actually bring it under control. To actually bring the situation under control when it gets that out of hand. So it's already a failure. So we'll see what happens in the future. I mean... We'll see what happens when Kenyan troops, Kenyan police officers die. They're going to try and keep that secret. Just like they did when the United States uh, occupied Haiti back in the 90s. They did everything they could to not call a spade a spade and a combat death a combat death. They kept saying they were random homicides or whatever euphemism they used. But 20 or 30 American troops died just in a few months when we occupied in, uh, what was it, 1994. I personally knew one of the guys that died. So, because <clears throat> I was a military kid, military brat, and my, he was my dad's co-worker. And uh, the Clinton administration did everything they could, could to cover up those deaths. So, but we'll see what happens when Kenya uh, loses some troops, if they lose any troops. And this is, this is, there's no way that this mission can succeed. Okay, it's just basic math, basic history. It's a really piss poor attempt. It's an optics thing. I don't, you know, half the time with, with these people, with our fearless leaders in the United States, they, it seems like, they don't, they don't do things like this to actually achieve the objectives. Everything is a short-term political ploy, optics ploy, just to keep them going for the next couple months to the next election. The problem is, is that kind of shit eventually catches up with you. And we're seeing that with the Biden administration right now. We've been seeing that with Netanyahu. So this is going to be a failure. That's my call on it. I'm usually right about these things. Just go back in my videos. Look at my video on Ukraine in December or November of 2021. All right, I am out.